Global finance chiefs are warning that swift action is urgently needed to escape a new wave of economic crisis. When countries run into financial trouble, they usually turn to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, which are primarily backed by the U.S. But as Marina Portnar explains, the dollars are running out fast. An annual spring gathering about the world economy produced a dreadful financial forecast. We are one shock away from a full-blown crisis. Critics say through the establishment of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank, America has positioned itself as an economic doctor to the world, using the institutions to retain global domination and fulfill the business interests of large corporations craving resources belonging to cash-strapped countries. What they do is they very often pressure governments to adopt what we call pro-cyclical policies. The economy is weak or in recession and they want them to cut spending or raise taxes. That can be very, very dangerous. I mean, you can slip back into recession, you can make a recession worse. A tale all too familiar to Latin America, the Middle East, and most recently, Greece, where tens of thousands storm the streets protesting austerity measures, public spending cuts, and tax hikes. As the largest financial contributor, Washington also wields the largest voting power at the IMF. To be fair to the IMF, it is run primarily by the U.S. Treasury Department and with some input from the European countries. That right there tells you most of the problem. This is uh, supposedly, you know, 180-something countries, and it's run by just a handful. Or maybe just one. An American has always served as president of the World Bank since its creation in 1944. But now, with its own backyard in disarray, America is hardly in a position to hand out financial advice to others. In 2011, America's financial management Management is best defined by a non-stop borrowing binge. See that clock over there? It's a running ticker of U.S. debt, which has surpassed a ceiling of $14.3 trillion. Now the U.S. may want to consider investing in a bigger clock with a few more digits on the display. A problem so bad the U.S. president can't ignore it and the government can't seem to solve it. We have to live within our means. We have to reduce our deficit. Republicans have refused to support measures such as raising taxes on the rich or cutting defense spending. We're approaching national debt on a par with the total GDP of the country. This is very serious because most economic research suggests that countries tend to decelerate in their growth and have more and more severe economic problems once the debt to GDP ratio gets above about 90 percent. And we're about to go through that level. All eyes are now on the nation that sets the bar for others to see if it could clean up its own bad debts at home. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.